Hey guys, it's Danielle over at DIYDanielle.com and today I'm here to talk to you about hook and loop. So if you're not familiar with the term, hook and loop is simply Velcro. Now Velcro is a brand name. So um, something like Kleenex is really tissue and um, Xeroxing, which means copying. Xerox, Kleenex, and um, Velcro are all brand names. Those are trademark names that the companies own that people have kind of taken to mean the same thing, even if you're using a different brand. So hook and loop is the proper term and you'll see me use it a lot on my blog and it's become a problem a little bit because um, I, want, I want everyone to understand that I mean Velcro but I want to be careful about using the term as well because yeah, you don't, <laughs> Velcro has to fight very hard to get people um, so they don't lose their trademark. I don't know anything about trademark law really but um, they try to make sure bloggers will use the generic term. Hook and loop is the proper term. So when we're talking about hook and loop, we are talking about two different pieces of what many people refer to as fabric. It is kind of a fabric, I guess. So you've got your scratchy side, which is your hook, which is what hooks on to everything. So if that helps you remember. And then you have your soft and fluffy side, which is your loop. And that is just kind of soft fabric that can go, go ahead and stick to. Now I purchased predominantly diaper, um, hook and loop. It is made specifically for diapers and um, I've used it on a lot of my cloth diapers. Now you're going to see different qualities of hook and loop and um, I can't testify too much to which is better because I'm really terrible at keeping track of them. So um, I'm like, wow, this one's really fraying. I'm like, I don't know which brand I used on this particular diaper. However, I usually don't use Velcro because I buy specifically for cloth diapers and there are specific hook and loops made for diapers. So most of my stash has that in them. Okay, so the tricky thing about hook and loop, particularly the hook, the loop is fairly easy to sew on and um, I, you, you just generally don't have too much of an issue with it. Sometimes it starts looking icky after like a really long time. But hook is a problem because hook sticks to everything. It sticks to your clothes if you put um, if you don't put like what are called laundry tabs on your diapers, it'll, they'll come on, they'll like start sticking to other parts of the diaper and they'll start pulling up threads on your diaper and overall stuff gets stuck inside the hook. Um, it's kind of a pain. So most people will put a laundry hook or a laundry thing on their diapers and it'll go a little like this. So this is like the tab of your diaper with the hook and they'll put the loop right here so you can close it up while you're doing your laundry. It's a really good idea if you're doing any kind of project to have um, to have that set up that way. The other thing you need to be concerned about is storing your hook and loop. So a lot of times you will get it when you purchase it, it'll be sold separately. So you can buy lots of hook um, or lots of loop together all at once. Um, most people will buy more loop than hook because you do try to use a little bit more of that. You want your, the smallest amount of whichever you're using, you want that to be the hook because that's what gets yucky and has to be replaced more. So usually you're gonna wanna use more loop than hook. So usually if someone does like the front of the diaper, they're gonna make the tabs hook and they're gonna make the front of the diaper, which is a long piece, they're gonna make that the loop. So again, if you have to replace something, you're only replacing the tabs. When I buy it or when I bought it from the company I was buying it from before, they usually send it like this and sometimes it's wrapped with paper and um, they send it in a plastic bag. I recommend storing all your loop together and all your hook together in a separate bag. That way it doesn't get tangled up because this is what happens when you store it all together and it gets tangled up. Yes, I can pull this apart and I probably will because I'm cheap and I don't like throwing things away. However, this is super annoying to me. So I've gotten better about storing it over, over the years. So I do recommend keeping it in plastic bags. So I'm doing a whole blog post about hook and loop and how to sew it, but I wanna show you really quick some ways to sew this on so I can just put it in the blog post. And then for those of you who just watch YouTube, you can see this. So the first thing you need to know is you're gonna be using a different type of needle. 
than you would normally. So normally for most, well, for a lot of sewing projects, I'm using a universal needle. So here it is. And I have like a million universal needles. These are a size 11, I believe. So these are, what is a size 11? For different thicknesses of fabric and um, for different types of projects, you want different sizes of needles. So when you're sewing a cloth diaper, you're usually trying to use like a little bit smaller needle because the bigger the needle, the bigger the hole it's leaving in your fabric. And you don't want a lot of holes in cloth diaper fabric because you want it to be waterproof. Usually you just try to use the smallest needle hole that you can. Now, the problem is, is when you start sewing with Velcro, you'll notice you start to skip, skip stitches sometimes. And overall, like it just doesn't sew it really well. In my opinion, one of the reasons that is, is because you're pulling thread through hook. And of course, hook sticks to everything, and that includes the thread. So I think you're gonna have some of those issues regardless. Um, however, some of the things you can do to ensure that you have an easier time sewing through um, your Velcro and sewing it onto whatever you're making is to use a larger size needle. People recommend a size 14 or 16. You can use like a leather needle. Um, I'm gonna be doing that today because I don't have a 14 or 16 needle on hand. I do have a leather needle though. So I'm gonna swap those out. The other thing you can do is you can either stitch it one of two ways. Some people use a zigzag. That's really popular with the cloth diaper community. The other thing you can do is you can do a straight stitch. Regardless of what you're doing, you wanna do a little bit smaller of a stitch. And again, you've gotta use the right needle. So, and let me mention, you can use a size 11 needle or whatever. It just might not work very well. So, all right, let me show you how these look when they're sewn on. Okay, so the first thing to note is I did some here with my leather needle and see how big those holes are? That's kind of what you're gonna expect in this situation. So you're gonna expect some fairly large holes if you use a big needle. Okay, so the one thing to note is along the sides, you'll notice there's a border. Now it's great to be able to sew on that um, so you're not sewing through the fluff. However, on either of the ends, you're not gonna have that option because usually it comes in long strips. So go ahead and sew very slowly with your short stitch. Now this is a short straight stitch and it is on a setting of two for length. So as you can see, I'm gonna try to stay really close to the edge right here. Now, the one thing to do is make sure you sew an X around the middle. Now, of course, I'm using black thread so you can see what I'm doing. I highly recommend matching the thread color to the color of your hook and loop. Okay, so that's pretty ugly when you look at it, but that's because I used a different color, <laughs> black instead of um, using white. So, and here we are, I'm gonna show you a zigzag. Okay, so for the zigzag, I have it set to about a two for length and about a four for width. Um, you can kind of mess around with this a little and see where you want to be. I try to like try to set it so it goes partially on or it goes onto the hook and then onto the fabric a little. So as you can see, it's going on both. Okay, now I'm gonna show you with a one length, same width setting. As you can see, it's stitching it much closer together. Now, here we go. So here this is on the, I guess the front of the hook anyways. And here it is on the back. It actually, I think it looks pretty good on the back. Um, no skip stitches, which is perfect. Here's how a laundry tab would work. And all you do, ah. Ah. pull it apart like that when it's not in use. And when you're about to put it through the laundry, you close it up so that it can't stick to, the hook can't stick to anything it's not supposed to. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Again, use a bigger needle, it's gonna save the day. I'm gonna order some bigger size needles, I think, so I don't have to use um, a jean needle because that's really or leather needle because that's probably better for actual leather however um that's what i had for today um yeah so that's it i hope this was helpful thanks so much for watching and check out my blog post about hook and loop on diydanielle.com thanks have a great day